All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Practice to Perfect. And all month long, we have been talking um, about filling your pipeline with your sphere of influence, right? And starting to cultivate those relationships. And as we've gone through, we've discovered different techniques and, and different things that we should be doing to stay top of mind and to take as much mind share as possible so that the market share comes next. Right. And through that, we've discovered the 36 touch program, right, to where it breaks down the amount of emails we need to be sending, the amount of text messages, the amount of phone calls, everything that we need to be doing so that we can be in so close a proximity to our database. So when they are ready to transact business, they think of us. And today we're going to talk about the, the gold mine, which is referrals. And the very first piece that you're seeing, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it into the chat so that you at home can um, grab this and, and download it. This is the, the gold mine of referrals uh, worksheet. And what this is, it says referrals from clients are a huge opportunity for new business. Set an intention to provide exceptional service to clients so that you can earn the right to ask for a referral, right? And to earn the right, you know, because this is the thing, and I all know that we all have someone in our world and in our ecosystem to where um, they only call and reach out when they're looking for something from us, right? And uh, I, I started thinking about, you know, that person that sells candles or Tupperware or whatever that looks like. And if we're in relationships with everyone and we're coming from curiosity and we're coming from contribution and we are providing value, then we absolutely have earned the right to ask for a referral. And so if we pick up anything that we, we've done in the last pieces uh, leading up to today, uh, we, we'll absolutely have that right. So the first thing that it says to do is number of relationships. Um, so I'm going to get out my calculator and just kind of walk through this as well with everyone just so that we can get a feel for it. So what it says here is the number of contacts, guys. And, and so when I think of a contact, I think of a couple of different pieces of important information, right? First name, last name, phone number, email, address, um, and, and definitely the birthday as well. So that's why I think of like a full contact. I think you can get away with um, phone number and name. Uh, phone number, name, and email, and address is even better. And so as you're going through wherever you're storing this, whether it's your cell phone, your CRM, whatever that looks like, you're going to go through and you're going to pull that information. And so for the sake of this, I'm just going to say uh, 500. Let's go um, to what I believe is going to be smaller than most people's databases. So if we were to say a 500 person uh, database of relationships, and we multiply 500 times 150 because it's saying that for every person, they know at least 150 people. Um, that should be 75,000 uh, potential clients. But let's just drop it down even lower. Let's just say that the bare minimum is 150. And if we were to say that we had 150 contacts, name, phone number, email, name, phone number, name, email, whatever that looks like, and we would go 150 times 150 that's potentially 22,500 potential clients, right? And this is, this is very low end. So if we were to say uh, 22,500, then what we're doing is saying, according to Nard, 6% of the people will move within the year, right? So within 365 days from today, 6%. So what we're going to do is we're going to say 22,000, 500, and we're going to multiply that by 6%. And that means 1,350 people that are in my ecosystem through a friend of a friend, right, are going to be moving within the year. Think about that, everyone. That is hugely powerful information. This is a national statistic that has been studied, and it is saying that 6% of the population will be moving within one year. And if we were to say that we had 150 contacts, which I know that everyone on this call has more than 150 contacts, and every one of those people knows 150 people, that's 22,500 potential clients that we should be in relationship with. 
And let's just say that we only had a 50% conversion rate, right? Let's just say that we were batting after every one, we were only able to convert 50 of our appointments. So if we were to take 1,350 or 50 uh, times 50%, that is 600 and 75 possible deals over the next 365 days. I want you all to be thinking to yourselves right now, like what would that many deals look like in your world? How would that change your world? What would that look like for your family, your communities, everything that you pour into? If you were to able to do 675 people or, 600, or 675 deals. And I know that everyone's like, Charles, well, first and foremost, I'd have to have a team. I'd have to have admin support. I would have to have all kinds of new things in my ecosystem to be able to do this. So shrink it down to whatever that looks like, guys. Maybe it's 50, maybe it's 60. And if we start getting intentional about these different pieces, we should be able to build some pretty big and amazing businesses. So as we go through, it says practice and use the following script. And when I start thinking about scripts, everyone, I have these conversations with agents and agents start to tell me, Charles, you know, I'm not scripted. I don't want to sound like a robot. It's disingenuous, all these different pieces. And I want to change because I think that's a limiting belief. And I want you to look at this and I want you to be able to practice it, adapt it, and, and just put it into your, to not necessarily your own words, but be able to pull it out of the ether, right? We're having our phone conversation we're using the Ford technique and I'm reaching out and saying, hey, how are you doing? How's the family? We're having a conversation. They're asking me what's going on in my world. We're, we're going back and forth. We're connecting at a very human level. And then as we're getting off the phone, it's like, I'm going to say something like, hey, so we're going to deliver such amazing service to you and that we know we're going to want to refer us. And if you don't refer us, we are going to assume it's because we have done something wrong and we want to talk about what we could have done better, right? Guys, this is the thing. We just want to start making sure that our people know that we are looking for refers, referrals in our business. Let's say that we don't have a client, right? Because that's a client follow-up script. What would it look like as we're going through and we're, we're really just the real estate economist of choice? And we're asking people what their one, three, and five-year goals are when it comes to real estate, right? We're not asking if they're looking to buy or sell or move or any of these different pieces, but we want to know, have they thought about it? Are they looking to buy an investment property? Are they looking to buy a second home in another state, another country? Are they looking to downsize, upsize, right size, whatever that looks like? And as we're going through and we're having those conversations so that we can help them and, and be that person of choice, we can also let them know like, hey, so, you know, I know that you're not looking to, you know, move in the next, you know, three years. And um, if you wouldn't mind, if anyone mentions to you that they're actually thinking about moving, if you wouldn't mind just plugging my name, that would mean the world to me because I think that you're an awesome person. And I know the people that are in your ecosystem are probably awesome as well. And I would love to work with them. Guys, it's just about taking mind share. This isn't pushy. This isn't salesy. This is just letting them know, like, if you think of me, I would super appreciate it. And we need to reward the habits, right? And we're not rewarding the outcomes. And, and I want everyone to be very clear that if someone sends me a, um, a referral and I close that referral and I send a referral, uh, the referral a gift, guys, that's against the law and we can't be doing that, right? Because we know that we can only give success fees um, to uh, other licensed agents. So we can't be doing things like that. But if someone's thinking of me, um, definitely as far as marketing goes, I might be sending them a, a gift card to Starbucks or something like that. Like, hey, I super appreciate you always thinking about me and to reward the habit, I'm, I'm sending off something of, of, of dollar value, right? Perfectly legal to do something like that. So then it says, you know, check out the smart plans in command right into the CRM that the, the Keller Williams has, specifically the quarterly call smart plan to remind you to call your people, right? Because this is what we know, like the bare minimum, if you were just to get on the phone four times a year, that would have a huge impact on your business. So let's just say, Charles, like I'm not comfortable doing the whole 36 touch. I don't even know where to get into. The, the four calls would be more than enough. So hopefully everyone has downloaded this piece, has looked at the opportunities that you have. 
has looked at something like this and said, oh, wow, like in my cell phone, I have at least 675 possible deals. What am I doing to get my unfair share? Because this is the thing, guys. We know there's 1.5 million real estate agents in the nation right now. And there was 1.6 million homes sold last year. And as we're going through this, we also know that there's 40,000 real estate agents in the Denver Metro. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, play this video. We're going to break different pieces down so that we can enhance our tactics around filling our funnel with client referrals. Welcome back, everybody. Again, my name is Carl Batiste, and I am working with Tammy Youngs as my co-host today. Well, we are so excited to see you back in this session, because in this session, we're going to talk about ways to enhance the skills that are required for you to generate those client referrals. Think about it like this. Referrals are a fantastic way for you to double your leads without spending any additional money. Let that sink in for a second, right? It's all about creating an amazing experience so that they automatically think of you when they, their friends, family, think of real estate. Now, in our previous session, we talked about a, an agent from Idaho Falls. We mentioned Mike Hicks and how he derives most of his business from client referrals. He's got a saying, and, it's, and it goes like this. He says, you can pay for leads, you can pray for leads, or you can perform and you can get leads. Now, really think about that. You can pay, you can pray, or you can perform at the highest level to your clients and then you earn those leads from them. Yeah, I love that. So how do we perform and get those leads? It's all about understanding your clients, knowing how they like to be communicated with and how often and asking about their family so that they know that you really care. Communicating with them often by using a 36 to convert so that you stay in regular communication. And then every time you communicate with them, remind them that your business depends on their referrals. Well, so Carl, I'm assuming there must be a model that they can follow to absolutely ensure that they don't miss any referrals from any of their clients. Oh, we have a model, Tammy. The three principles of referrals are the steps of how you ask a referral and what to do and when you do. The first principle is to provide value. Providing value to your client comes before ever asking for a referral, right? Value comes in the form of exceptional service, marketing, market information you share frequently, advice and recommendations that you give freely, most importantly, demonstrating that you really care about them. It's equally important to educate or remind your client that you're in the business of real estate and that your business depends on them and the referrals that they give to you. You know, second, the principle is to ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. And asking for help is simply asking your clients for referrals. Ask them permission to talk about real estate with someone they know, either by giving out your name or giving you the person's information. And then the last principle is to reward. Reward them for giving you a referral, even if it doesn't re result in a transaction. Yeah. Hi everyone, I, what I love about those three things is this, right? The very first thing is, is it's creating value, right? When we're reaching out and we're building these relationships and we're doing different things to take mind share, right? We don't wanna steal people's time. We want to make sure that when we're reaching out, we're actually providing value to them so that they actually appreciate that we're actually calling them. Because if we're not doing anything except for reaching out and saying, hey, it's Charles, say this is a business call, just want to see who do you know that's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, you know what's going to happen? They're going to stop taking my phone calls. They're not going to respond to my text messages. They're no longer going to open my emails. So one of the biggest things that I've seen in our industry right now is what does it look like to be the connector of people? And what I mean by that is, guys, a, a super easy touch that we could all be doing is we're reaching out, we're doing the four technique, obviously, right? I'm a huge proponent for Ford because I think this is the second or third time I've said it since we, we started this call uh, 18 minutes ago. And when we're going through here and doing our family, occupation, recreation, dreams, we also should be asking for recommendations that they have for other service providers, right? So, hey, just wanted to, you know, check in and, and see if there's anyone that you know that I should also know, 
right? I'm always getting asked by my clients if they are, if they, if I know someone that's a CPA, an electrician, a great restaurant, a great bakery, right? And start getting those pieces. And then what we can do is we can actually use that information once they're giving it to us. And we can go out and say, hey, so-and-so, I was talking to my friend, they recommended you, they said that you had the best bagels in all of our area and just wanted to touch base and see if I can meet you in person and, and see, you know, and just have the conversation guys, right? Whatever that looks like. And then what we're able to do is we can do multiple different things. We can actually take more mind share about after we go have that meeting, what would it look like to jump on a Zoom call with them or jump on a Facebook live? And then you're having that communication, you're plugging that restaurant, that business, that, uh, that entrepreneur, they're getting in front of your people and your people are getting in front of them as well, right? And so it's, it's cross-pollinating and it's how you can build a big business and you will become that person who is known to be the connector. And that is what we're looking for. Then you're gonna, people are gonna, your phone's gonna start ringing, text messages, Facebook message, all those different pieces where someone's gonna say, hey, do you know a great this? And you might not. And you're like, I don't know that person. I know a couple of people though. Let me see if they do. Guys, this is huge. This is game changing information, right? Because if we're able to be able to do this, people are going to look to us more and more. Um, the second piece, right? Just the reward. We always want to be able to reward. And this is actually the third step, but making sure that we are thanking them publicly that we're going through, we're sending the, the, the gift card or some piece of marketing. And what I say by marketing is it just has our name on it, right? Like the, our brokerage. Uh, and so that it is a piece of marketing, whatever that looks like for tax purposes. And then they were talking about making sure to ask for the business. And I don't care how you do that. This can be a client, this can be uh, just someone that you're having a day-to-day -day relationship with. And I think it, it, it does. It goes back to the, hey, and I super appreciate our friendship. And if there's anyone that's like you that does mention that they're looking to buy um, or anything with real estate, I would appreciate you um, letting me know about it. And this is how I coach people to do it. And what I mean by coach people is coach my clients. And I would say this, you don't want them to hand off your phone number and a lot of times they're not comfortable giving someone else's phone number to you, right? They're like, well, let me just make sure that it's okay. This is what I like to do. I say, I super appreciate that. And um, what I have found with my clients is if you wouldn't mind introducing us in a three-way text message, right? Because that takes pressure off of everyone involved. And so they're just like, Hey, so-and-so, I wanted to introduce you to Charles. Charles is on the, the text message as well. He's that real estate agent that I was telling you about. I think that you guys would, would get along and he can absolutely help you. And then you take it from there, everyone. I, I love coaching my clients to use that script and that technique. Um, and that just takes the pressure off of everyone. Yeah. Reward them immediately for giving you a referral and reward them when a referral transaction closes. Show appreciation at every single point. The reward can be a gift. It can be an exclusive event just for them. Make the reward relevant, though, to the person that gave you the referral. We'll talk more about rewarding in the final lesson. Absolutely. And I say, you know what, Carl, let's jump into the conversation so they can hear what that sounds like. Everyone, we're going to give you a script with proven results. Now, do not prejudge how your clients will respond to you when using this. Most clients are going to appreciate the opportunity to help you, right? Now, these scripts, they're in your download for this lesson. And yet, you know, we're going to just walk through what some of those look like. And it could sound something like this. Um, you know, Carl, my business is built on relationships, just like the one that I have with you. Who do you know that I can reach out to to build a new relationship and really help them with their real estate needs? You know, another one might be, you know, most of my business is by referral. And Carl, without referrals from my clients, well, I wouldn't have a business at all. If I continue to take great care of you, you know, can I count on you to refer your friends and family to me? Um, or it could be, and I love this one, 
Carl, I know that everyone knows at least seven people that are going to buy or sell in the next year. And while I would certainly love to get all seven of those, can I ask you to remember me with just one of those people? Yeah, those are excellent. And they're so natural and they're so comfortable. You know, the best time, Tammy, to ask for a referral is when you meet with a client for a buyer or seller appointment. This is where Mike Hicks promise and the script from Tony Baroni, who took Mike's script and enhanced it in his own way. So you have a copy in your download. You begin the script and the, at the pre-qualifying stage before the appointment. So may I role play with you, Tim? Absolutely. So Tammy, when we meet, I'm going to share my promise with you. It starts with providing the most amazing real estate experience you can ever imagine. Would that be okay? Absolutely, yeah, that'd be great. And I will share more with you about that when we meet. You notice here, it's all about setting expectations up front with the client and leaving them a little intrigued and curious about the promise when we meet. Already, you're setting yourself apart from other agents. Well, it's so true. And, and let's just jump in. Let's jump right back into uh, the appointment where you're going to actually explain what the promise is. And what you're going to see again is that you are setting that expe expectation rather uh, from the very beginning with this client that you're going to receive a referral from them. And so, Carl, can we kind of swap, swap positions and I'm going to play the agent if you would just, uh, just behave like a seller. Are you good with that? Yeah. All right, so we are at the listing appointment. And, and I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna say, Carl, thank you so much for having me here today. I know that there are thousands of realtors in this area, and I don't take for granted that I'm here. Uh, the first thing I wanted to ask is, did you have a moment to read over the package of information that I sent over? I did some of it, yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. Did you have any questions about that? Um, I do, I'm assuming we'll probably go through most of it though. Okay, all right, well, fair enough. Well, if there's anything you don't understand as we move forward, please stop me. Um, however, Carl, the first thing that I'd like to go over before we get started is something that I mentioned to you on the phone and it's called the promise. And I'd like to share with you, you know, what that promise means to me. Uh, it truly means to me that I'm going to create the most amazing real estate experience you could ever imagine. That is my goal. Now, Carl, if I'm able to do that, I would love to ask for two things from you. Would that be okay? Sure. All right, well, that, thank you so much. Well, first is that I have done such an incredible job that at some point between now and closing, you'll send me a referral, that my service is so incredibly awesome that you are gonna feel compelled to tell your family, friends, coworkers, well, even neighbors you know, about me if they need a referral for service providers or if they're looking to refinance their home or if they are looking to buy, sell, or build wealth through real estate. That is absolutely my goal to earn that right to have you do that. And I intend to earn that, Carl. That is my first goal. Now, if I fulfill this promise to you, would you be comfortable referring people to me? Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much. Now, remember, I asked him, I said, there's going to be two things that I'm going to ask from you. We're going to cover that second one in the next lesson. However, I'm going to jump forward uh, to really how we wrap up this conversation around the promise. So I'm going to jump back into role play. So Carl, can I share with you what the promise is not? Yes. Sure. It's not a promise that everything can go perfectly. And in fact, things can, and sometimes they do go wrong. And what I am going to tell you is that I'm going to partner with you and we'll navigate through those obstacles when those things occur. Fair enough? Uh, once you have a signed contract to represent your client, you will immediately ask for a referral, just as you stated in the promise script. The next best time to ask for a referral is right after the close. It sure is. And, and we, want, we want to stop and talk about that for just a moment. And so, yeah, that is the perfect time to ask. Everyone, what, what I just heard from that, right? I think there's enough newer agents on this call that are just launching their business to where this is, this is pertinent, right? Because awesome. This is great, great information for when I am sitting across the table for a buyer and seller absolutely right and we're going through and we're saying you know what i'm going to work so hard for you and help you win that during this transaction if you wouldn't mind about just thinking about someone else that i could help that i could provide the same level of service and help them win i would appreciate it right i, I love those pieces and i think that there's enough people on this call to where charles i'm just building my business what if i don't have 
that buyer presentation or that seller presentation that is that is going to be right there. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to start reaching out to people and I am really just going to start digging in and seeing if I can find referral partners, right? Uh, people that provide services. I, I love that piece, right? And so ring, ring. Hey, this is Charles. How's everything going? Great. Awesome. So as you know, I just started my, my real estate journey. And during this journey, one of the things that I want to be very intentional about is being able to refer the best possible uh, people to my clients, whether that is an electrician, a plumber, uh, an accountant, a tax strategist, someone to help my people build wealth, whatever that is. Do you know anyone that is an entrepreneur or a business owner that I should know as well? Guys, that, that's, that's huge, right? Because people do want to help you. They also want to help other people. So they are going to be helping you by connecting you to someone awesome. They're going to be building someone else's awesome business for them by connecting you to. And this is how I would lean on it, everyone. And I would have a massive, massive database of um, just third-party vendors. And then you guys will see this, right? People are going to pop up on Facebook. And they're going to say, hey, I'm looking for X. And you're going to be able to connect them with X. Um, you're going to be able to make some phone calls, see what's going on in people's worlds. They're going to tell you, hey, um, I'm actually about to start a remodel on my house. And then you're going to say, well, have you already talked to a contractor? Um, we're in the process of, of talking to contractors. Hey, I have an awesome contractor that um, I could connect you with if you would like to, to, to connect with someone. Right? Guys, when you're going through and you're having these conversations, you're going to find yourselves in positions where people need someone and they're not directly asking. And if you already have that resource for them, that is huge. And they're going to not forget about it. They're going to, they're going to be super thankful that you were able to provide them someone to help enhance their world. So don't sleep on this piece. What she just said uh, through the, the promise from sitting across the table can be implemented anywhere in your business. And it does not need to be sitting across from a buyer or seller that's looking to uh, do business in the next 30 days. Ask for a close. And so we're going to share something with you that we call the one, one, one method. And what that means is one day after closing, you're going to reach out and you're going to call that client just to check in, see how they're doing. Uh, do they need you for anything? Uh, before you end that call, you'll set the expectation that, hey, you know, would it be okay if I reach back out, just touch base next week and see how you're doing? So again, now you're going to call them one week later. At the end of that call, you're going to set the expectations that, you know, hey, in the next month or so, uh, I'm going to reach back out again uh, just to check in, see how you're doing. Meanwhile, if you need anything prior to my reaching out, you know how to get in touch with me. Uh, my point here is that, you know what, I really appreciate you and I value you as both a client and as a friend, and I'm not going away. Guys, this is a great opportunity for you to ask for a referral. This is when they are the happiest and they're willing to really think about how they can help you. Yeah. So as I think about that, everyone, right? Just about the tactic that we just talked about. What does it look like? And it's like, hey, so, you know, I understand that you could not think of, a, you know, a business owner at this point. I, I, I know I put you on the spot and you weren't ready for it. Would you mind if I follow up with you in a week from now? And then in a week from now, you have that conversation and they think of someone and you're like, hey, awesome. I super appreciate you being able to find that, that person that I was looking for. Um, and I know that there's probably a few more people that, um, that are just escaping your mind right now. Would you mind if I followed up with you in another month to see if, um, if anyone else popped in the, um, top of mind? And um, if anyone has popped up in the meantime, feel free to, to reach out to me. Would love to connect with those people. Everyone, like these tactics can be put anywhere as long as we're intentional about using them. And I promise, like, I promise, do not sleep on this piece because you will be able, be able to build a monstrous business coming from contribution and enhancing other people's lives. This is also a great time to offer recommendations to the client for additional services that may, they may need moving into their home, right? Painting, window washing, landscaping, whatever that may be. Let's talk about clients that you may have lost touch with 
or those you've been in touch with that maybe you haven't had a referral from. Many agents have found great success with raffle drawings or engineering a reverse raffle where they call you for big items that encourage their database to call in to enter. Prizes can include a barbecue grill, a big green egg, backyard movie projector for the family, a fire pit, a camping package, or a high-end Dyson product. Awesome. So they just listed things that were like $500 plus. I would challenge this tactic, and I would say, everyone, I bet if you were to put this on social media, you could offer a $25 gift card and your phone would be ringing, right? So what does it look like? Hey everyone, this is Charles Coleman over at Keller Williams Realty, and I am looking for referrals from other businesses. For the next five hours, I am going to be standing by my phone, taking all of your calls, and for every recommendation that you give me, I will give you one raffle ticket for this $25 gift card. Guys, what does that look like, right? Then the phone calls are coming into you. You're no longer going out and reaching out and saying, who do you know that's looking to buy a seller invest in real estate, right? They're actually calling to you because you're coming from value. Like they're like, cool, like I want to win a $25 gift card. They will absolutely do that. You would also do it to where if you did, well, if you did do this tactic to where they're saying, you know, a $500 this or a thousand dollars that, um, I would challenge and say this what would it look like to partner with one or two of your fellow agents in the office to where three of you, four of you go in on this and then it's significantly cheaper. And then all the raffle tickets can actually go into one drawing, right? Because no one, no one really knows what's going on with that piece. Um, but if you were to go through and like, Hey everyone, this is Charles Coleman over at Keller Williams. We are raffling off this, this egg grill today. Um, who do you know that's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? And it can be you that I can help today. Any and all names with phone numbers attached to them will be entered to win this egg grill, right? And like I said, guys, go in with a couple agents and you can all purchase this thing, raffle it off. Everyone's doing their own Facebook Live. Everyone's reaching out to their own databases and then you all do a Facebook Live of the raffle happening, pulling out the name and announcing the winner. They don't understand that they're not a part of your team. They don't understand that it wasn't one of your clients or potential clients. Guys, this is a way to, to truly get your phone to start ringing and to build this business. One top team did a reverse raffle, Tammy, and got 589 incoming calls with 250 new contacts and 147 leads. Another agent held an outdoor client event and had a booth set up where the clients could be entered into a drawing for a nice prize that they provided a referral. The agent was able to capture a lot of referrals this way. Now, Carl, you actually, on your team, when you were practicing real estate, uh, you did a great event, and I'd love for you to share that. Sure. So when I was in full production, I had a farm of about 2,100 homes. And in that farm, we sent out a mailer. And of course, we asked them to register for this event. And the event was actually a children's hospital event that we sponsored on their behalf to raise money. And we had a child in the neighborhood, Giovanni, who was a leukemia patient. And our goal was to make him our mascot for the event. And every year, we would um, send out to 2,100 homes, a login registration, and all of these people would come to a park that we actually um, secured, and we would have an Olympic Games for kids. Tammy, it was fun. It was 50-yard dash. It was the mini dash for little kids. It was a baseball throw, potato sack race, and I secured my vendors to help, and my entire team had our team shirts on, and we were walking around meeting the parents and building relationships. And year after year, the size of that event just continued to grow and grow and grow. And then none of it was about real estate. It started as, I care about you. I care about our community. And it was amazing to see the number of families that emailed us saying, hey, I was a children's hospital kid once, or my child was a hospital, a children's hospital kid once. And the program just became, just blew up. 
So it's a great way to build that relationship and to get referrals. Well, what I love about it, Carl, and thank you so much for sharing it with everybody is, you know, uh, it, it brought such value to your community. It also brought value to your, your database and the people who attended because they were doing good for their community as well. And so we're going to trust that, you know, what you're seeing is there are so many different ways to really communicate and stay in touch with your people. And it could be as big as, you know, a backyard movie giveaway or something uh, like the event that Carl just shared, or it could be something very small. It could be something where you saw them post on social media. Maybe there was a new baby or a new puppy or a child going off to kindergarten, anything like that, something that would prompt you to either, you know, send them a text or pick up the phone and congratulate them or ask questions or maybe it's the perfect time to do a pot buy and drop off a baby gift or you know a, a bag of dog bones, whatever it is, it's all about keeping in touch with your people. Everyone, what they just said is real estate is a contact sport, right? We need to be having as many conversations as possible and there is no wrong way to get into a relationship with people. For those that know me, right, and we've been talking about how I've built my business, I did it through what would what was called a, uh, a Facebook Messenger A through Z, right, where I would literally reach out to people, whatever uh, obscure national holiday it was, and let's take Paper Airplane Day, and I would reach out to someone on Facebook Messenger, hey, happy national Paper Airplane Day, what's more important, time and error distance? Everyone, I was really just looking to get into a conversation with someone. And after they got done with the shock of that was the most random question someone has ever asked me, it would go into a direction where their next question was, how's the real estate market? Are you still a real estate agent, right? And we would start having real estate conversations. And then I could get into deeper relationship with me being the real estate economist of choice. I don't want you to all leave this, this room thinking that, you have to always go real estate, real estate, real estate. We just need to be able to connect with people and just take so much mind share. Yet, yeah, it's when they first realize that we're a real estate agent and we're staying around and we're helping them and we're coming from curiosity and contribution, they will always, always remember that, that we're a real estate agent and we just need to be constantly reaching out and seeing what we can do for them. So I love the pop by ideas. I love going on Facebook and seeing what's going on in their world and seeing how we can enhance those different pieces. Going out into our communities, whether that is our digital community on social media, right on our Facebook, if that is a digital, if that is a geographical farm, um, if that is just your friends list and you are inviting people over for a mastermind or you were inviting people over to come in and to plug into maybe a, uh, a family style dinner, a potluck. I know that we've had agents in our brokerage that have gone through and have done um, a BYOP, a bring your own picnic. And what they did was they went out and they reserved the, uh, the playground or the, the park and they might have brought the, the, the bags games and the horseshoes and all the different games for everyone to play and everyone else brought their own food and they just made an event of it. And then you have the opportunity to get into these relationships and real estate will come up. So everyone, there is huge potential with jumping into your database and coming from curiosity, contribution, important to them. And once we're doing that, they will want to help us out as well by giving us referrals. So I hope that we give you a lot of different pieces to run with and that you will try to do something here to enhance and be able to get one of these possible 675 deals, right? I think that everyone in here would be okay with even 100 deals this year, right? 50 deals. What does this do for your business, for your family, for your lives, living that life by design? If we were to put a little bit more intention on pouring into our people and then asking them to help us.